Oh, it's going to be the exact exact same difficulty as it is every single time we do this. I mean, I, I'm surprised. You know, what we could do, y'all, is just whatever, go back a year, <laughs> see whatever conversation yep. we had about the government shutdown last time, and play the exact same clips, and we could take the rest of the afternoon off. You're oh, going to have the great. Uh, Defense Department saying how bad a stopgap is. You're going to have the Democrats wailing and gnashing their teeth saying people won't get paid and uh, things are going to, you know, the museums are going to close, et cetera. And the Republicans will talk about the $36 trillion debt. I guess you have to change the number because it used to, what, be only be 32 or 33 last year, so maybe we could dub that in. But it's going to be the exact same conversation. And my guess is the exact same dynamics. They'll either be a very short-term shutdown, or they'll go right up to the, um, the, the the final moments and do some sort of short-term stop gaps. But overall, the spending is not going to change. Washington's not going to change. So uh, until you yeah. get something dramatic, uh, we're just going to do the same old song and dance. But this stop gap in particular isn't that short-term. Johnson wants this six months extension until... March, when we'll have a new president and could very well have a new Congress. Mick, do you read that as a, a bet that Johnson wants to have this fight with a new administration or potentially be the one to still spearhead this as House well, Speaker? Two things need to happen for that, right? The House Republicans need to retain the majority and they still need to decide again that they might want Mike Johnson in charge. I mean, put yourself the Republican, you know, the Republican shoes in the House, right? We've only got one branch of government right now. We think we're going to take the Senate. We've got a 50-50 chance of taking the White House. So why cut a whole year-long deal now where you can sort of take the chance, you get past the next election, and maybe get a little bit better deal? Keep in mind, um, they did the same thing back in 2016, um, thinking that when if the Republicans ran the table, we'd get a great spending deal, and we didn't. We had the House, the Senate, and the White House. And the Republicans effectively did the same thing the Democrats have been doing, which is to spend a lot of money. By the way, that brings no joy to the former budget director to say that, but that's the way Washington works, especially with the 60 votes, uh, 60 vote rule in the Senate. So, yeah, look, ultimately you do what the Senate wants because the House doesn't have to be bipartisan and the Senate does. So the Senate usually gets what it wants on this unless... Uh, the House or the White House is willing to stomach a government shutdown. Donald Trump was willing to have that battle for, what, 45 days? But my guess is that Mike Johnson doesn't have uh, the stomach for that going into an election. Uh, mm. And certainly the White House doesn't want to see a shutdown. Kind of interesting, Mick, to see Donald Trump warming up to cannabis uh, over the past <laughs> week or so. First, he you said he would vote for this. Well, first, he said he'd vote for this referendum in Florida. Um, now he says yeah. he supports federally rescheduling marijuana, which has been extremely controversial and a, and a non-starter for a lot of Republicans, as well as the Safe Banking Act. He is open to providing banking services to companies in the cannabis industry. What do you make of this? I'm assuming this is not second nature to your former boss. What's inspiring him to go here? And could this actually give Republicans in the House, the green light, or in the Senate for that matter, it's already passed the House a dozen times or something, to move ahead with the Safe Banking Act. Yeah, a couple of things. Let's be clear. When you say Donald Trump is warming up to cannabis, that's figurative and not literal, just to be clear. Fair um, enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the SAFE Act is sort of off on its own. The SAFE Act is a good piece of legislation, and I'm not just saying that because I co-sponsored with, uh, with uh, Perlmutter, Ed Perlmutter, several years yeah. ago. It's the one that essentially says if you're dealing in a state where it's legal, you can have access to the financial services industries. Right now, you can't, and most of the cannabis business in this country is done in cash, which is really – it's not that safe, um, but put that aside. Look, your low, larger question is a, is a fair question, a good question. Is Donald Trump sort of moving to the center on this? And the answer is yes. Um, he believes that it's a way to pick up some of the younger voters. Um, you know, his core principles don't involve cannabis, right? His core principles are things like taxes and regulation and the border and tariffs. So he's sort of able mm -hmm. to, to have a little flexibility, at least in his own mind, when it comes to something like cannabis. So if he can find a compromise... Um, that keeps, uh, you know, a large number of people in, in Congress and a large number of voters happy. It wouldn't surprise me if he tries to find that.